Well, welcome to another three-point edit tutorial, this time the half halftone tutorial. I've recently been playing around with the idea of doing some halftone um, uh, print effects or uh, compositing effects. Of course, uh, if you're not familiar with halftone, halftone is the process that newspapers or printing technology uses to uh, turn um, grayscale or um, graduated images into high contrast images. Um, that is with the use of dots and then uh, convert them back to um, a sort of smooth graduated appearance. So as you can see in this photo um, the image is actually made up of lots and lots of dots. Uh, you don't actually get a real smooth transition from one color or one gradient to another. Uh, if we go across you can see the edge, there's a sharp edge, but the graduated uh, filler in the middle is actually a series of white and black or white and colored dots that vary in size and, and density, thereby um, giving them a different color each time. Now I've achieved something similar with Blender and we'll just Of course, when you take um, video or photos of um, actual objects, there's lovely smooth gradation in between all of the pixels. Uh, and when you zoom out the pixels, they look like a nice smooth color. However, that's not really the effect that I wanted. I wanted a stylized effect, and I want to enhance the dot value of the halftone or the screening effect. So I want to achieve something more like this. And if I zoom in, you can see that the dots are made up of a variety of colors, and they're much larger than the newspaper, but they have achieved that sort of coarse um, effect. As you can see from the demo that you may have noticed earlier, it gives quite a dramatic feeling, very 70s, a bit retro sort of feel. So if we look at um, the screen effect itself, we can see that it is made up of a lot of dots. And how do we achieve these dots? Because that's really the crux of the um, problem, is making an overlay of dots that we can use to um, reduce, the con uh, reduce the information in the original image. So here is our composite, or our compositor, sorry, nodes arrangement. Maybe I should have arranged this a little bit nicely. Uh, I have a movie node down here. And of the movie node, I've adjusted the levels to use the different styles. So I have a black and white, which is tinted blue for the background. I also have a different uh, treatment for the uh, color foreground. You can see the curve here. I've had to increase or re reduce the contrast in this image we have a look at that, looks like this in order to get that color effect, whereas the black and white background looks like this to make it very contrasty for those dots. Moving across, uh, I have two, um, two different group nodes, one to produce the black and white halftone effect in the background. This is the black and white halftone. You can see the dots in there on the background wall. You have to forgive the uh, big graphic element in the middle there. But how to achieve that look. So if we step into the group node by pressing tab, I've got a different sample here. Uh, anyway, what I'm doing is I'm taking the taking the source from the movie clip, I'm sending it out through a separate node and taking the Luma component or the Y component, putting that through a color ramp to do further adjust, fine adjustments of the contrast of the image. So it looks more like this. Of course I have that overlay on top uh, from another graphic um, that's being ported into the image before this. Uh, it's up here, and it's coming down into the group node combined already. 
I'm also using through multiply the um, just ignore the rotate it's not working I'm using this texture node and the texture node is a texture I've called dot screen okay so in this material I've got um, two uh, different types of screens I set up so if we go over to texture the first one is the dot screen which is a magic type with a lowish turbulence if I pull the turbulence down you can see it changes the shape of the magic filter if I go the other way it increases the frequency so that you get um, different shapes anyway reset the back to 5.9 mm. yes there we go so that I get more of a square effect little squares and black lines which we overlay on top of oops, control up to go back which we overlay from here we overlay that on top using multiply <coughs> uh, then I'm using a dilate and a road uh, to modify the actual value uh, subtly this should subtly change the value in of, uh, of the uh, fall off around these dots but so have a look I'm also going through the blur filter <coughs> and the blur filter is also providing a slight um, change to the nature of those dots so they're not quite so sharp um, and then I add a color ramp to increase the contrast so that um, where there are um, where the blur occurs at the moment it's more of a graduate you can still see shades of grey up here so by applying the color ramp to these shades of grey I knock out uh, the values so that it's more of a two line a two color process and two color plus the uh, screen on top gives us this um, apparent shading effect what else is there to describe that's it I've done something similar, if I zoom back out, I've done something similar with the other group node for colour. I'll just step into that. Now I did the, all the exact same processes, but this time I split up. Instead of just the Luma component, I've taken a separate R, G and B components and I've duplicated all of those steps through the screening process and I've changed some of these values so that I got more or less of each one of the green, red or blue components. Um, I've stuck them through blur so that they average the values a bit. Then I've put them through the high contrast color ramp and these vary a little bit as well. And then we recombine them back at the other end. I'll just add a viewer by pressing shift and control and click so that we can see what the result is. And there is my front door. Whoops, it's a bit hard to see. There is the front door shot with all those colour components broken down into high contrast elements. And if we tab out of that, on top of that I added uh, well, the circle effect for the multiply. That was back here. That's also another material so that I'm not using any textures. I'm generating stuff from within the dot blend file. So you can see here a material that I've created and applied to another object elsewhere, just a, a null object. And this is the circles material. Step into the material here. I've just used wood oops, with just rings only, no noise. And I've animated the position um, and the position of the, uh, the color value. So the more it moves, the narrower they get. And I also animated the scale of the um, the scale of the circles with this value with a uh, keyframe set in it. So now the scale changes whilst it also changes the the um, boundary between black and white values. Um, these scale values were to normalize the shape because it was it's taking a regular circle and turning it into an ovoid because of the nature of the um, 
the rendering dimensions. So I've just normalized that through a couple of scales, going back through a relative scale to change the um, aspect ratio, and then another scale to fit to render size. Anyway, enough of that. That goes through a multiply, gets added before the halftone, then it gets included in the halftone effect as you can see here. Then after that I'm putting a color ramp on that effect to make it nice blue color. Seems like the kind of color they might use to print with. Um, uh, multiply, adds the color, I uh, added it for the final effect I also added a box mask which got another colour yellow just to complement the blue add those together to get a greeny yellow effect then mix those with the foreground element which we can't see at the moment because I'm in the wrong spot Oops. Please don't crash, please don't crash. Come on, frame update. I also found that I needed to record it um, or edit with uh, compositor properties. Set, just press N there. At um, edit properties, generally at quite high when I was trying to figure these out um, because I was not getting good enough resolution to see what was going on with these dots that threw away too much of my high frequency resolution. But it slows the process down a bit. Uh, so there you have it. So that's the, the end process of creating and adding a, a halftone effect. I'll quickly look at um, a different setup. Same source, I believe, but only color over a black and white background. I think, yes, that's right. Earlier version. You can see the dots there you can um, change those dots based on what kind of um, scale you give your halftone. So for example, if I wanted to have, instead of dots here, I want to have lines, I would step into my halftone uh, group and change the t nature of the texture. In this case, it's the scale is the same, uh, so it creates circles or squares. So I'll change that down to a very low figure for the Y value so it's only got height and now you can see that it, I have a contrast of of um, screening type so if I go back to my viewer not only do I have black in the background with a color contrast I now also have a screen type of lines contrasting with the screen type of dots which was kind of nice as well a quick look at that there we go uh, the other thing of course you might notice is that I have a mask chopped around here and I thought that looked very uh, cartoon or graphic as well. Um, that was a lot of time rotoing in the tracker, uh, which is I guess a tutorial for another day, but was uh, most rewarding when it worked out at the end. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Press like on the, com on the YouTube page if you want to see more. Thanks very much for listening.